Oh my god. That was such good lore. Everything was good. Oh, I love that they brought back the Bat Queen because I love her. I love her and I love the lore around her. And now I'm just so sad for all the lost lost palacemen. Yeah, that was like the first time that show gave me like chills on the shot with all the palacemen and the trees. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, so tragic because like literally Ida explained like the lock, the inner lock is only for one staff. If your owner is like dead or if your staff didn't get passed down or you got broken, it's just done forever. That's insane. That's so insane. You can't even adopt one? I guess it could if you have the staff. If you had the staff, you could take them, but yeah, I mean, I got the impression from the episode that all those palacemen have been, like, abandoned purposefully by their owners, but, like, yeah, I I'm guess so they could have just died, too. That's... I didn't mm -hmm. think about that. I'm so happy. It, it made so much sense that the Bad Queen was so overprotective. Uh, I was worried that it was just like, oh, she's got mother instincts. and Like, that's kind of a cop-out. But the fact that the reason why she is protective is because, like, she's the big bad that protects everyone. And she was part of a grand staff. That's mm -hmm. so, so cool. That's so cool. I think my only problem with this episode is at the end, Ida did the whole, oh, the elixir doesn't it work doesn't anymore. anymore. <laughs> this is bad. Like, oh, come on. You could have shortened that line. It could have just been like, is the elixir not working yeah, anymore? That's work it. Anymore. You didn't have to say, this is bad. Ooh. Or just like look at an empty elixir, like worried. I don't know. <laughs> like we know. Like looking at an empty elixir and then like a feather grew again. Like show not tell, guys. Personally, I didn't have any problem with that line in particular. Like, it's something she's stressed about, so she says this is bad, I need to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, it was a bit forced for me, but I understand. The only other problem I had was her friends, Willow and Gus, were completely useless this episode. <laughs> like, to almost like a comical... I mean, it was funny. I mean, it was funny. But, like, the Bat Queen, and she's like, no one survived her trials or whatever, and then they're, like, all zany, like, ha-ha, I'm out. Uh, yeah. Face my wrath. I'm just like, come on. Luz got caught in, like, vines at one point, and I was like, okay, so now Willow's gonna show up, and like, nope, she didn't. Yeah, I really thought Willow was gonna help out with that. Well, Willow gonna... had, her, had her hands tied, but, like, she didn't move a muscle the whole episode. <laughs> she was like, yeah, no, it's whatever. Mm. Yeah, well, Gus did move some muscles, and you saw what happened to him. <laughs> I know, but he also <laughs> announced... <laughs> How do you feel about the trials being famously difficult, but Luz just got to do them? They're just chores. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's very I, I... strange lore, like, is our witches, like, incapable of no, doing- No, maybe these? just no, no one else, like, cared enough about their palisman to do all the chores, so they just- Well, that, well that was the thing, is- at the end, she added one, because she was like, that's the last one. And she was like, no, there's one more. So it's kind of clear that, like, in the end, you'll never win because she's so stubborn. But, like, Aww. she made a connection with Luz, I guess, because of Albert. So she was able to actually get out. It's cool that, that palismans can communicate to each other like that. Yeah, and it also, like, a lot of the plots are pretty predictable, but this one was mm -hmm. the first one that blew my mind when I watched it. I don't know, like, even when their eyes glue together, you're like, oh, cool Bat Queen magic, or you're like, oh, Albert magic. Like, you're mm -hmm. not like, oh my god, is, is she a staff herself? It's just yeah, really cool. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was just, ah, <laughs> oh, it's so cool. I thought it was just, oh, they're magical creatures, this is how they communicate. No, they're palismans. Oh my god, so cool. <laughs> Sorry, one last thing. King doing the... The squeaky rage yes. to, <laughs> to bring Ida back. While well, I found it a bit like too silly, it was still funny. So I still so appreciated it. it I think so they cute. reused the previous recording. Uh, like you know how they used the same theme screen recording. God, yeah, I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed at that by the end of the show. I'm like, <laughs> make it do it again, you cowards! <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, but they, they did that basically probably because Alex Hirsch can only make his voice like... Yeah, you, you only got one take of it and he's like, never again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they destroyed his vocal cords by the end of that take, so he couldn't do it again. How about Tulip next? Oh, I mean, I feel like I've been adding stuff. Yeah, this was a great episode. I loved it. I don't have even the one thing that, like, Don pointed out, so they sort of had a problem with at the end with Ida. I was like, no, nah, that's fine. This is a good episode. <laughs> good twist yeah. and everything. Uh, Nick? 
I agree with you guys, basically. It's not like the most exciting episode, really, and it definitely, it took an interesting direction with that twist, but it starts off summarizing Ida's curse again and stuff, so I was kind of expecting there to be more lore related to that. Like, even though it's way too early in the show to actually give a super definitive answer on it, but I thought it'd be a little bit more related to Ida's past somehow and not, like, just be about the, the Palisman things that we haven't really seen at all until this point. From what I've seen of this show, and from what I know is coming, only like 16 episodes in, which we haven't caught up to yet, it really does push through a lot of its plot points quickly, but Ida, Ida's mystery is something that it wants to keep talking about, but doesn't want to like do any anything more with it, other than acknowledge it's happening and make it happen. Yeah, like, I wasn't expecting any sort of big answer, just, like, more than just the, the elixir suddenly not working, I guess. Like, I I thought the tree would be related to it or, or something, but... Her curse was, like, to set up King's plot, almost, yeah. like, his <laughs> playground plot. Yes, but it, that also is part of the ongoing plot of yeah, now yeah. her potions aren't working for some reason. That Like, that's gonna be a thing that continues to be a problem. And even though it's not related, the, the, the Bat Queen Palisman thing also seems a lot like it's a plot setup, like... Yeah. We're going to we're going to go on that adventure at some point. I I also I just I liked the um I was surprised by the continuity of having those demon hunters and the bat queen come back again. This kind of establishes that it's a kind of show that's going to do stuff like that, I guess, cuz I would have absolutely 100% expected both of those things to just be like one-off jokes or one-off villains, but they're back. <laughs> I personally was expecting the Bat Queen to come back, and I'm glad that this is how they brought her back. Oh, she's so cool. I agree that the Bat Queen is awesome, and I like this episode because it had lots of the Bat Queen in it, and she continued to be awesome. I felt like it was a bit light on the jokes compared to the previous couple of episodes. Yeah, definitely. It was interesting in this one how it was set up, like, the whole beginning of the episode made it seem like it was going to be about, like, sports, and then it pivoted into yeah, being about yeah. Bat Queen. I, I only mentioned that because uh, I, I thought there were some good sports jokes in there about, like, teams. About how Lulu's hates the other team when she doesn't know anything about them. Yeah! <laughs> She's like, how dare they do that to us? How dare they? Typical them, or whatever she was saying. Uh yeah, is that a tipsy? No, um, I don't have any massively strong thoughts about the plot. I didn't realise that the um, owl was actually a character, the owl on the end of his staff. I thought it was just like an ornament at the end of his staff. Um, it Wait, was we've alive. seen Albert yeah, before. Yeah, we've seen Albert and they've mentioned his name I before. I might have, but I, I forgot about it basically. Yeah, he's, so... he's the one who stole Luz's book in the beginning and made her run to the world, the Boiling Isle. And I thought it was quite ironic that the vampire, the vamp what is she called? The Bat, Bat Queen? Queen. Um, she wanted to protect him, but in trying to protect him, she ended up trapping him and, in a sense, losing his trust. Ooh. And that's my thoughts. And I just really like, um, while I would have loved to see foreshadowing of this in the previous episodes, I really like that Ida and Albert have like a nice bond and connection that they showed in the start of this episode. But again, I think I would have appreciated if they showed it in previous episodes as well. Because they're sweet. Speaking of foreshadowing, that's a screenshot from the Amity uh, <gasps> Library episode. Bro. Oh my god! <laughs> Even if you saw that back then, I would have just been like, "Oh, she has weird feet." So yeah. it was a really good. It was a really good like yeah. little of thing. There, there's no way that would make sense to us until this episode explains that they have holes on them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Doesn't she only have one, or is it on both their feet? No, it's weird that it's on that's both. what I. That's what I mean. She only has one on her. feet. Foot, I was but thinking about that on the episode. Cup, it has two. Because, of course, I had seen it before, and then so I knew the twist was coming, and, like, there were a few times that she lifted up one of her feet, but not the other one, and I was like, oh, they're they're keeping that one. They're yeah, I noticed that, too. One. Something interesting to note, this was actually the mid-season finale. Whether or not they oh. chose that, whether or not they chose that, it was probably Disney's fault, but this is when it went on hiatus after this episode, so... Mm. Um, we caught up so fast. Uh, but it's a good show. Well, now we have more to catch up with, and I'm stressed out because I'm about to miss the second episode, and I'm scared Twitter will spoil it, so let's mm -hmm. go fast. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go fast. All right, has anyone else um, not yet talked about their thoughts? Okay, uh, one thing. Did anyone else think that the reason the potion didn't work 
uh, when Ida swallowed it, it's because she swallowed it whole, and so like the potion was still inside the glass, and she was <laughs> no. like digesting it. No, that's she a spat good out point. the pusher. Yeah, that's a good point. I think I think she spat out the pusher to show that it had been consumed. Remember? Oh, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, no, she did. Uh, like the cork at the end, she spat it out, and I'm like, okay, so now the bottle's open inside. It should be inside her. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> oh, also, I just remembered something that I wanted to talk about in the previous episode and forgot about it. Isn't Ida, like, the only reason that a human appreciationist society could even exist? Like, she's the only person bringing in stuff from the human world. <gasps> we don't really, we don't true? really, we don't really know that for sure yet. We don't know I if don't it's think. the only one, but it looks like she has a market for it, yeah. What if it's a star situation where it's all the people in the Our House world descend from humans? Yeah. Oh, I really like that. <laughs> I mean, Ida did say like when the, when she learned the light spell in that episode, she was like, I, she was like, witches used to yeah. do it differently in the fourteen hundreds. Yeah. Like that's kind of referencing, like just like yeah. The what if the human world. witches like what if human witches came in and, and they descended like in Star Wars is the forces of evil? I still wonder if Principal Bump is a human, but I guess <laughs> he probably isn't because he can cast spells, but maybe that demon on his head makes it- I don't know. Yeah, maybe There's that demon on his head, things. like, poisoned his heart, and now he has a, like a, like a sack. Yeah, bile sack. Regardless of where the people came from, I mean, like, the stuff that they collect, and they're, they're talking about human stuff, and, like, the only reason they could even know anything about human society is by, like, going there or, or seeing things from it, and, like, Eda, as far as we know, is the only one who has the ability to do that. Yeah. I was gonna say, as far as we know, because, I mean, it's a big place and we haven't seen a lot of it, so there could be more than we think, but we also have no counter evidence yet, so you're right. Like, Ida just has a monopoly on these kids. Yeah. What's no, because somebody must be able to do it, because who on earth brought loose to the Owl House world? It didn't seem to be Ida. No, it was. It was Ida it was. And, and Albert. It was Albert by mistake, because he stole her book and she chased him, mm -hmm. but, yeah. Uh, that was episode one. She, seemed, she seems careless enough to bring a couple more humans there. <laughs> yep. All right, so let's do ratings. 8.5. 9. 8.5. Wow. 8. I feel bad, but I'm a 7 on this one, maybe. Oh, Just because I yeah, like... I have to feel bad. That's reasonable. The lore is good, but it was kind of like... It wasn't all that exciting or anything like that. I really didn't like the sports thing. <laughs> I didn't mind yeah, the sports I... thing. I just think, like... The, the actual, like, the rising action aspect of it just being, like, her doing chores, like, a funny haha -ha montage of that and stuff, and Ida's owl thing, like, being played mostly as a joke, like, it just kind of didn't, didn't, didn't feel too right. Yeah, King's plot was, it was kind of funny, but it wasn't that interesting. Yeah. I like that the kid was actually evil. Yeah, that was, that <laughs> that was, was a good, that was a good. <laughs> and I love when they keep bringing back the deep-voiced kid. <gasps> oh no, a monster. <laughs> we... We failed to mention the best joke in the series so what? far, which was King saying, um, what did he say? Like, close call. She's like, what? <laughs> she's like, two, she's like two, she was two feet away. <laughs> he only gave her time to walk like two steps. God uh, damn it. Uh, that's like, that reminds me of the Adventure Time joke where Finn goes, Ice King, and Ice King goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> right uh, next to him. Love cartoons. Uh, all right. Yeah. Thank Cartoons you, guys. Cartoons are great. I'm going to go eat food. Yay. Thanks for watching, and super special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to know when I post a new video. Be sure to stay tuned for more new videos and live streams. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok to get frequent updates and video clips. And consider supporting me on Patreon for just $2 a month to get some behind-the-scenes content, like scripts and review notes, and even early videos. Once we get about 20 Patreon supporters, I'll start a Discord server for us to chat.